by her wonderful depictions of the Indian way of life, incorporating little-known facts with the overall picture of the way the Indian really lived. Karen says, my books center on the American Indian culture as it was, a true picture, not colored with the sensationalism of death and destruction as was depicted by the newspapers and eyewitnesses of the time, which often carried more political ambition than truth. Karen admits that she does exhaustive research for her novels, even to the extent of spending her honeymoon on the Blackfeet Reservation in Montana. Please welcome Karen Kay. Los Angeles. I've been uh, in Clearwater, Florida for um, 16 months now. And uh, with just a little bit uh, coming home uh, for my brother-in-law, uh, who passed away last year. And seeing my husband, I've been gone for a while, and it's really good to see all you friendly faces. It's good to see you. I see a lot of people that I know. Um, the first thing I'm going to do before we really get into this is I'm going to explain why I have a new synonym. Uh, synonym. Uh, pseudonym. Pseudonym. There we go. Um, every single uh, person that I say, okay, now I'm writing under the name of Jen Bailey, asks me why the name changed. So let me just get that out of the way. Uh, it's, it was my publisher who wanted to change because my last eight books have been very paranormal. This book is very not paranormal. It's more in the vein of The Last of the Mohegans, which as you know is more action and, and uh, romance. And so my editor said it's so different from what you usually write that we want a different name. So that's why I have a different name. It comes from Bailey, which is my last name, really. And uh, my mother's name, Genevieve, but Genevieve was too long. And so my mom was also called Jenny or Jen. So it became Jen Bailey. And that's why it's G-E-N, not G-I-N, like in Ginger, or um, uh, J-E-N, like Jenny or Jeannie. So Jen Bailey. from writer's block. Okay, I know not everyone does, um, but I do. I was actually on my uh, blog, which is, let me just pitch it, it's Petticoats and Pistols, for any of you who don't know, it's a Western blog. And uh, most of the writers there are uh, Western writers, either contemporary or historical, and I'm the um, sort of token Indian romance writer. <laughs> I like that. Oh, we won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I said I was going to be doing this talk on writer's block, and do you know not a single writer there said that they ever get writer's block. Now, either they're lying or they're really incredibly good writers because I suffer from this. And so I thought I would uh, give you a talk on why and how you can get yourself out of writer's block. Did anyone bring a manuscript by any chance? Okay, I don't think that got to the newsletter because I was, um, if there was time, and I don't know if there'll be time, but if there was time I wanted to go over different problems that you're having and see if we can fix them. Um, okay, so the first thing that you should do when you have writer's block is A, realize that you're stuck. That's probably the very, very first thing. I don't know how many times I've been writing away and two weeks go by and I'm like writing a page a day and I'm like, wow, this could take me a year to write. I have like two more weeks. <laughs> um, and I'll suddenly go, oh my gosh, I usually write five to 10 pages a day. Something's wrong. So that's the first thing is, is the, realization or the recognition that, hey, it should be going better. Um, after you've done that, the very, very first thing, and this is not one, and I have three tried and true ways to get you out of writer's block. This is, 
this may help. This is not really what I consider writer's block. This is just your mind is going, 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 going. You've got your plot, your characters, your this, your that, your time setting, you know. What does her dress look like? What does he look like? How long is his hair? You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, you've got all these things going on, and sometimes it's too much overload, and you just need to step back, you know. Go for a walk. Go shopping. Go for a drive. Um, to tell you the truth, one thing that works really well for me, and I don't know why it works, is a, uh, a nap. A, t a 15, 20 minutes, sometimes if I'm really tired, it's like an hour. Nap. And something about that allows the mind to sort of get it all together, and you, and you usually wake up and you go, oh, okay, I can fix it. I know what's wrong. Anyone else experience this, where you just lie down, let it lie, you come back, and it's there. Anyone else? Yeah, okay, so you know what I'm talking about. All right. So what do you do if you lie down and you come back and you're staring at a blank screen and there's nothing there? What are you going to do? Um, and days go by, and maybe a week, maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks. And, um, you know, after a while, it's sort of like, you know, I didn't, I didn't like that story anyway. Let me write it. I'll start again. You know, we'll get different characters, different settings. We'll just start again. I didn't like it anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, probably your story is just fine. Something is, is wrong. So let's go to these, these uh, tried and true things that I have used to actually get me out of writer's block. I kind of... Uh, liken it to you're stuck in the mud and you have a tow truck. Um, you, you've run into some barrier, you've run headlong into a brick wall and now you've got to kind of take yourself off the brick wall and uh, dig yourself out. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is just kind of explain who I am. I am a Scientologist and so what I'm going to tell you are from, is from the study technology of L. Ron Hubbard. And I use it, I don't know what I would do without this technology. It has gotten me out of so many different um, things that I've gotten myself into. It's not religious, it's very, is the word secular? What it means not religious? Look at me, I'm a writer. Yes. <laughs> it's very secular. These uh, principles are used in schools, they're used in uh, different um, uh, tutors use these principles. Um, it has really very little to do with um, um, the religion. It has nothing to do with the religion of Scientology. But um, what, what it was is Mr. Hubbard uh, discovered that when he was trying to teach people how to do things, and, and Scientology is a very hands-on doing sort of thing, uh, that they couldn't do it. They could like maybe spout off different ideas and different concepts or axioms and that sort of thing, but when it came to actually sitting down and doing it, they couldn't do it. So he grabbed a subject, which was at the time photography, and determined to study, study. And so these principles come from that. The first one that I'm going to go over is lack of mass. Have any of you ever heard me talk about this before? I think, yeah. Okay. I talked about this to the Laura chapter. One time we did an all-day uh, seminar, the Laura chapter ones, and this is one of the things I talked about. So lack of mass. Well, what do we mean by mass? Mass. Mass. Something that has matter, energy. It's existing in space and in time. That's mass. Okay? As opposed to uh, something non-physical like um, an idea, uh, a thought about something, would not necessarily be mass. We're talking about physical universe mass. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Let me tell you writer's blog that I had one time. It's in the book, uh, War Cause Passion. Um, I kind of want to go to that board and write that down. Okay, can you, can you kind of follow me? I'm following. <laughs> I'm going to give you a 